Have you ever wondered where new Bitcoin come from and what is it exactly that the miners have to do in the mining process? You will be learning that in this video. Welcome to my channel. Welcome to this video in which we're going to be talking about mining and proof of work. This is probably one of the most, if not the most important video in order for you to take your knowledge about Bitcoin to the next level, all right? We know that in Bitcoin it's all about transactions and it's all about messages. And in, and in order to keep those transactions flowing in the system, we need that the miners confirm those transactions. Those miners are in like in a competition between each other. They are like in a computational contest and they are competing to have the right to create the new block the fastest. And that competition is based on computing power. Okay? Besides that, we know that the blockchain is a book of all transactions that happen in the internet. If the blo blockchain is the book, each one of the blocks is going to be a page of that book. Before we get into details um, about what a block is all about, I want you to know that when we initiate a transaction, the transaction is unspent, is not confirmed, and they do not go directly to a block. They are going to be staying in something that is called the mem pool, the, the Bitcoin memory pool. And the transaction, the, the miners are going to go there and pick those transactions and put them in a block. And uh, as these miners are driven by economical incentives, of course, they are going to pick the transactions which um, transactions fee are going to be super, super, super high. Okay, I wanted you to know that first about the mempool and now we're going to get into details what a block is all about. Okay, nice. Stay with me. What do we have in a block? What do we have in a block? I hope you can see well. We have the header and what do we have in the header? We have the time in which the block was, was created we have the difficulty target, meaning how difficult it's going to be to mine this block, meaning how many zeros we're shooting for at the very front of our signature. You will learn that later in this video. Meaning we have some, some technical data as well. We have something that is called the Merkle root which you're going to be learning in a second as well. We have a hash of previous transactions, of previous block, sorry. You have a hash of the previous blocks and this is exactly what allows us to uh, have a block of chain because this is the link that connects that cryptographically connects all the blocks together. And this is what allows us, uh, when transactions are built, they are built uh, on and based on the previous transactions that happened in the past and everything is connected, okay? And also what we have in the headers, in the header, is the nonce. We are going to be talking about this also in this super mega video. And, uh, but before we get here, before we get here, what all mining and proof of work is all about. In a block, we also have here, this is the header. Then we have the transactions. All the transactions, including, including the coin-based transaction. All right? So, my friend, before we get into here, I want you to know that the first thing that you are going to learn is this. What is a Merkle root? and what is the Merkle tree and why you need to know this information. Are you ready? Okay, before we get into details about what a Merkle tree is and what a Merkle root is, I want you to know what a hash code is or what a hash is. The same way we use fingerprints to identify, to summarize the identity of a person, to summarize the identity of a human, we use hash codes or hashes to um, summarize the identity of digital information. Alright, 
So a Merkle tree is a data structure composed of all the hashes of all the transactions that are in the block. Okay, and we structure this information to have more efficiency and we structure this information so that this information has integrity and I'm going to explain you why in a second. Okay, so we pick all the transactions, uh, all the hashes of the transactions and we hash them together all the way up as you can see here. We have A, B, C, D, we hash them together, this one are hashed together until we, um, at, we reach the Merkle root which is the main uh, hash of all the transactions that we have in this particular block and we said before that the Merkle root is what is going to be uh, integrated in the header of a block, all right? So one particular um, characteristic that this structure also has, as I said before, it has data integrity and uh, that means that the transactions are tamper-proof, meaning that if I go back to an old transaction and I change something about this transaction, that change is going to be reflected in the hash of this transaction and that modification is going to cascade all the way up to the Merkle root and that is going to invalidate the block, all right? So, as a summary, the Merkle tree is a data structure that uh, based on all the hash of all the hashes of the transactions, we achieve more efficiency uh, by doing this and this information has integrity because all the transactions are tamper-proof, okay? And the Merkle root, which is the hash of all the transactions that are in, in this block is going to be integrated, um, is going to be in the header of the block. Okay, welcome to the block part and pay attention because this is super, super important. This is where it gets, it gets very interesting. We said before that the process of mining is a process of closing a block out and it involves extending the block of chain. We know that the miners are in a competition between each other, but what do they have to do in order to win the competition? They have to guess a piece of information, they have to guess a number, they have to solve a puzzle, that it is the nonce, okay? I told you before, this piece of information that is added in the header of the block, they have to guess this nonce. And this nonce is what allows uh, each hash code of each block to look in a particular way, okay? And that particular way, that the hash function of each block has to look like is that it has to start with a certain amount of zeros, okay? So let's say that this block is called B. The hash function of B has to start, let's say, with four zeros. And there is a property that all the hash functions have is that that property is that they, they're they're, they are only one way, they are only one way, okay? So if we know that the hash function has to start with these uh, four zeros, there's no way for us to go back and know which piece of information is going to generate those four zeros. And this is the information that the miners have to guess. They are going to start guessing over and over and over again and the miner who is willing to provide this piece of information the fastest is going to mine the block, okay? When you hear someone saying that the longest chain wins, it doesn't mean that the chain with the most amount of blocks is going to win. The chain with the highest amount of difficulty is going to win because as I said before, um, this competition is based on computing power, uh, which is one of the main characteristics of proof of work, all right? So when the miner that is able to provide this information wins, what do they win? What, what, this miner, what is this miner going to win? Uh, we said before that they are driven by economical incentives in order to behave honestly and do they work properly. So what do they win? They win two things. They win a transaction fee and a block reward. Okay? And the block reward is what answers the question where do new Bitcoin come from? Okay? And is it exactly with the word reward we answer that question? And this process helps every four years. Alright? Let's go back for a second to the hash functions. 
We know that uh, the hash function, have, they have to start with a certain amount of zeros and the more zeros we have at the beginning of a hash function, the more difficult it is to mine a block. And a block is always going to be produced every 10 minutes. That is uh, the, the, the target time that it has to be produced. Uh, so if more miners are coming to the ecosystem, that means that they are going to be able to guess the nonce faster and they are going to be able to mine a block faster because it's based on probability. So, in all, and, and for that reason, the, the, the difficulty has to be increased. And uh, every two weeks, uh, the nodes are constantly adjusting the difficulty of this process. All right? So when a miner wins the competition, close one block, that information is going to be propagated to the system, those transactions are confirmed now, the information is propagated in the system so that everybody knows what's going on, and uh, that's it. That is the first approach of the mining and proof of work process. There is more information for you to know that you're going to learn with me following videos, but I think this is enough for now. I hope you learned a lot. Watch again this video and I'm really looking forward to see you in the last one, uh, the last video of this video series about Bitcoin under the hood. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to subscribe and uh, see you soon.